Hey, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Um, today is uh, another Thursday at 2 o'clock, and I'm broadcasting live from Chesapeake, Virginia. And um, I'm sending out my message to uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook, and a couple others. Uh, Gloria, my wife, is in the studio. Hello and welcome. So we'll be monitoring uh, the uh, should we monitor the broadcast and also uh, looking at the, the uh, chat room responses. Uh, so give me a like and give me a thumbs up and uh, send me a question or give me a comment and I'll be glad to get back to you. All right, now today I'm going to do a pretty exciting little program. It's a, it's a plain error that I've done. Uh, so I'm going to take you over to my uh, painting table and explain to you what I'm, what I'm going to show. So let's go to my overhead. Uh, take you over to my overhead camera. Okay, I'm going to turn the chat room on. Okay, the chat room's on. Okay, now this is a photograph uh, that you saw at the, uh, you'll see at the end of the video, but this is a, this is my reference photograph here that I used for the, the plain air that I did. Uh, it's a, it's a local park here nearby, which is one, a place I really like to go. And this here was really uh, interesting because I had a nice, very light area. And, and an interesting background of trees and so forth. So when you see that, you'll this photograph doesn't show the real highlights that I saw. But in the in the uh, in the video which I did which I did live, I I uh, videotaped it. So I want to I want to share that with you. And uh, after we after the video, uh, I'll bring you back and then we'll discuss the uh, the final painting. So I'm going to take you to the video now to show you how I painted this scene. Plain air painting, Locks Point Park. Now this is the scene I was looking at. This is beautiful. I saw the, the light the hit the, hitting the ground with the, the light colors of the green and the, the shadow pattern and also the beautiful trees uh, around there. Uh, my first step here is to uh, do a composition drawing. So I have my sketchbook and just a, a regular pencil. And uh, I'm sketching out the shapes that I'm picking up. I'm observing what I'm looking at. And I'm, I'm designing my composition from what I see. And I'm picking out the elements that are, that are prominent in my mind. Uh, that, uh, that fence line, uh, which is in the foreground there, is a very interesting shape. And it's really characteristic of uh, the Locks Point Park. There's a lot of these fences around. So it's a very good characteristic. And that line I went across there is the horizontal line. And then I'm picking out some of the background trees, the shapes, uh, like the, the variety of the angles, the variety of sizes. So I'm picking out those shapes there for the background trees. And I'm, I'm, adding, I'm finishing off uh, the rest of the composition uh, to get the elements that I want. To, to bring that trees down, a little, there's a tree there a little closer in the middle ground. And there's a big bright tree that the, the sun is hitting on, so I got that as part of the composition. Here I'm adding in the uh, area which I think is where the, the light is coming through. That's the path of light coming through the trees and hitting the ground. And the, I'm indicating here that the, back, the background trees are backlit, so these are all dark. And then uh, the shape of that fence line uh, there's a broken rail there is hanging down. So interesting little shape there is I want to add into it. So uh, I'll, you'll see that in the painting when I, when I do it, that uh, there'll be a lot of interesting shapes. And I'm here I'm sketching in the, the shadow pattern where the, the darker areas are on the ground. Here I've blocked in those basic shapes here now on my painting board. Uh, I got the uh, the greens and I got the the tree lines. So I actually just what I did here I put in a, a basic outline base coats of colors to get me started on the shapes. And here I'm adding in more green now. This is that light green that's uh, uh, let's see the sun coming through the trees and so that light green on the ground 
and that light green on that tree on the left is what really caught my eye. So this is the light green pattern that I, I wanted to capture. Now I'm going to add in the uh, the, the trees, and they're they're backlit, so they're going to be dark. And I'm starting in the background, trees, uh, moving into the middle ground, toward the foreground, coming in toward the uh, foreground of the of the painting. So I'm I'm observing the the elements as I look at them, and I'm painting in the shapes that I like. Uh, leave, trying to simplify some of the design, uh, eliminating some of the areas that uh, are not necessary to, to tell the story, but to get the major shapes and, and the values, the, these are darker values because they're backlit by the sun, a mixture of uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue gives me that dark brown color, which I'm using, and I'm using a round brush a number eight round brush uh, for the painting part. Now the background trees, again, these are the interesting uh, shapes, uh, the variety of angles. There were some leaning over, some straight up and down, uh, some were smaller, a little, some were larger, but the, uh, the shape of the trees in the background were very interesting. So I wanted to capture that look there in the background of those, of those trees. So they're backlit also, so I'm painting them in, a, as a, in a, dark, a dark brown color because they're backlit by the sun. Now I'll show, down, show my palette. Uh, this is my basic outdoor palette that I have. I just two simple brushes, a round brush and a flat brush. And all the colors in my palette are here with me on plain air. And a small bucket of water. Here I'm mixing up the darker browns. I'm going to be going in and adding in again more of those background trees. And these are the trees that are behind this light green tree. So I'm, I'm painting in the shapes as I see them. This one here is partially hidden by that tree. So I'm just showing the partial parts of the trunk. It gives, it gives me variety, gives me a variation of the shapes and the, the sizes of the trees. So I'm actually painting an observation. What I'm seeing, I'm seeing parts of the trees uh, be behind that, that light green tree, which is lit up by the, the sunlight. Here's a couple of joggers running by and they said hello. Uh, this is a well-populated park. People can down here to have uh, have picnics and so forth. Uh, again, I'm taking it back down to the palette. Here, I'm going to uh, start mixing up some greens for the uh, the trees. I got a lighter green. I'm using uh, lemon yellow and uh, green number one. And there's my uh, palette in a bottle, spray bottle that I use to wet the paints. Spray bottle available at my website, everestwatercolors.com. And that's a uh, green number two. Again, a, a second color of green in the mixture. I'm going to have all kinds of variety of greens. A lot of greens out here with the, with the grass and the trees. Mixing a little bit of lemon yellow. Gives me a nice light green mixture. And there's the, now I'm adding in the uh, Hooker's Green, which is the darkest green I have on my palette. <clears throat> and I use that towel to wipe out the extra moisture from the, from the water bucket. Here I'm adding a ultramarine blue to that green mixture to give me a real dark green mixture. I'm going to take the flat brush uh, using a side side brush stroke 
Now I'm adding in the lighter greens now. First of all, lighter greens on the, the light tree on the left, which is the one that's being mostly hit by the, the sunlight. And that's the one that really attracted my eye. So here I'm painting in the, and I'm using the flat brush now on the edge, edge, edge of the flat brush. I'm painting in the, the light areas that I see on the edge edges of the trees. Those leaves were very light, light green. I'm adding that lighter green back into the, the middle of the tree. Then moving to the left, filling in the filling in the space with the colors that I see. There was a lot of light green out here with that sh sun shining through the tree. I can see a lot of light greens here that I'm that I'm painting. This light green uh, uh, captured that whole left side of the painting. Uh, there was a lot of sunlight coming through that section. Now filling in the spaces uh, with that green mixture. Uh, a little darker over here on the left, on this left portion of the shadows from the other parts of the trees, casting shadows on the, on the limbs. So varying the greens is very important. Uh, light and middle, middle tone greens on this area. Now I'm mixing up that darker green now with that uh, hooker's green and uh, ultramarine blue. The darker greens were back in the uh, evergreen trees in the background. Uh, they're, they're much taller, but they have a lot, lot dar darker uh, branches and darker leaves on these trees. Because number one, they're in shadow away from the light. And they also are all the way down to, in, into the middle ground. And, and they're trying to indicate here that the leaves are in front of the uh, in front of the uh, trunks and behind behind some of the trunks. Yeah, filling in that area up in the top there with uh, the darker green mixture to signify the the green the green foliage up here in those those tall trees. Working in the background, uh, there was some the smaller trees coming down toward the horizon line. Again, there was tree there were trees there, smaller trees that uh, had lots of leaves showing. Also, they were also backlit with the sun, so they be they were darker, darker in value. And a little bit of shadow pattern on the ground uh, that gives me that indicate where that. Uh, uh, sunlight's coming through the trees that have that path of light. So there, there was shadow on the ground from the trees, uh, especially along the horizon line right there, behind that path of light. And now I'm also now I'm putting in some darker values here in the foreground because those are shadows from the trees also. So the foreground was a little bit darker. So a mixture of uh, greens and a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of greenish brown mixture to show the shadow, a little bit of shadow pattern. So adding a little bit of, uh, and also a little bit of texture. There was some texture on the ground uh, of some leaves and branches and so forth. So this was uh, a textured area. It also was darker. It was in shadow. So I'm trying to capture that color and uh, the look of that. It was brown. With a little bit of green mixtures in. That was the first layer there in the foreground. Just get to just just to get uh, that first layer started in the foreground, just to give me a, a textured look. And here I'm using a spray bottle here to uh, loosen up that that paint. Uh, this gives me dots, and it'll also uh, loosen up some of that color that's on the, on the background all the way across the painting. Okay, going back to my palette, uh, I'm going to be mixing up some darker browns. 
Now here I'll be using, uh, you'll see, a little, add a little bit of water, add a little bit of burnt sienna into the mix, a little bit of water, and then into the ultramarine blue. That'll give me that dark brown. Adding a little bit more burnt sienna. Darken up that color. You can see here I'm adding in that dark color now into the foreground trees. Uh, these, these, tre these trees in the foreground were backlit by the sun, so they were much darker as I come forward. And using the round brush, number eight round brush, loaded with that uh, dark brown color. And here I'm, I'm looking at those trees right now, and uh, you'll, I'm seeing, I'll show you here the, the viewpoint that I'm having. I'm trying to capture those limbs and trunks of that large tree mass here in the foreground. It's pretty complicated, but again, I'm going to simplify and capture the essence of that tree mass uh, with the darker colors. Observing the color that I see uh, in in the in the landscape, and I'm going to be drawing in there, drawing in the uh, the branches, at least the prominent branches, the ones that are the, the main branches on the trees. Uh, again, trying to simplify the scene, but but at least capture the essence of what I see. Painting in those painting in those shapes that I see that uh, in, the, in the in the foreground. I've always enjoyed uh, drawing trees. I've always been fascinated with the shapes, and uh, the uh, the angles, and the sizes. I've never found a tree that's alike. Every tree I've ever seen has always been different. So it's always it's always been a pleasure and a, and a joy to paint trees. And that's one reason I picked this subject today, because I, I wanted to paint some trees, and I, I like that path of light that's coming through this scene, because I want to capture that light and darks against the trees. So it was a, a good combination, and the right time of day to capture this. Now here I'm darkening in the branches that are backlit. I'm using a round brush uh, number eight uh, with the uh, dark brown mixed to paint in the shape of the trees. Now here I'm going to capture the uh, that that gr uh, green tree that's got got all the branches on it, and here I'm going to capture the essence uh, of the branches and the dark areas that I see on that on that smaller tree. But it's the prominent tree there that's showing uh, the interest that I have of the the light green and the path of light coming through and the lighter green mixtures. But it, it had a lot of small branches, so I'm going to capture some of the basic ones to, uh, to paint what I see in the scene. I'm adding in some of the detail to indicate uh, the branches from that particular small tree. This, uh, tr this, these branches were pretty spread out. It was a smaller tree, but it had a lot of long branches. And a lot of a lot of nice light green leaves. So again, it was a very interesting, very interesting uh, tree to paint. And here I'm trying to simplify, capturing the essence of the, the shape and the essence of what I see with these long branches and all those leaves that were attached. They were catching the light of the sun.
So that little tree really became the center of interest as far as the major part of the painting. Because uh, it had a lot of light colors and a lot of the dark colors were right there. If you also notice in the background, there's a little bit of water showing. So there was a little bit of, there's a little bit of water in the background there. Just, just a hint of some of that blue. Now here I'm using some of the lighter colors now. Uh, that's a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. And I'm starting to work on the foreground post. Uh, these characteristic posts here that are in the park, uh, these are very interesting. And I, I'm, I'm really going to take my time on these. And painting plain air, uh, the, the, uh, the painting is vertical. It's almost at a 90 degree angle. So I'm, I'm holding the brush away from the, uh, the paper as I'm painting. So it's a different feeling than painting on a flat surface. So it's something uh, that needs to be practiced a little bit because uh, it's a little bit unique painting away from a, a surface and painting vertically. Now here I'm putting some of the shadow pattern on that uh, I'm painting in the basic color. I'm putting in the basic color on that on that railing, fence railing. Uh, I guess that's a, that fence rail. It's called a fence rail, but these are these are pretty popular uh, fence lines in a lot of parts of the country. But there, there, there's a lot of them here at the Locks Point Park. They run all the way around the roads and along the roadway, down by the docks. So there's, there's a lot of these uh, fence lines that are available. And there was a little bit of tr little trees there in the background that were poking through those other trees. So I captured some of the branches. And here I'm adding a little more brighter color to this middle ground tree, which is the center of interest. So I want to get a little, a little more color, a little more light color, a lot of, a lot of yellow. A lot of yellow green in that particular tree. So I wanted to emphasize that color uh, with a lighter color mix. And a little bit on the ground. Get more yellow, a more yellow green in it. That was the path of light coming through the trees that were hitting, hitting the ground, which is what caught my attention for this particular location. Adding a little more dark greens now, just to, to uh, touch up some of those edges. A little more shadow up there in the top. A little more contrast between the light and dark. There, were, there was some light tree, but there was uh, lots of shadows from the other parts of the tree. So here I'm trying to capture some of those darker greens that were in shadow. And also filling in some of the, the white space area. Kind of tighten up the uh, composition a little bit. Also darkening up at the top. Uh, there, was a, there was a lot of shadow up there on the, on the top trees. So filling in, again, some of that white space. Eliminating some of the, the white areas. And darkening up the shadow area of those larger trees. I'm using the uh, side of the uh, round brush that makes a nice texture stroke. It gives a nice texture stroke of uh, leaves and trees. One of my fa one of my favorite uh, strokes that I use for painting trees is a side edge of the round brush. It gives me a rough edge. It gives me an irregular edge, which I like. Uh, especially painting trees. And touching up a little bit more of the shadow pattern, a little more contrast there in the, in the background. Now I'm adding a little more uh, branches now to those little, little background trees. There were little small trees that, that were between the larger trees. 
Uh, I'm just putting in the little little limbs, little limbs and branches. Now here I'm adding the darker shadows to this uh, rail rail fence. And here I'm really going to take my time because uh, this was a very interesting uh, fence line. Not because it's unique, but because it's, it's, it's interesting shapes. But it's also, a, it'll show you a lot of more detail on how to paint this. Now I'm painting plain air and I'm, all, I'm painting on a vertical surface. So holding the brush and getting the right angle so that uh, I'm, I don't want to rest myself on the paper if I get wet paint there. So I've got to be careful of what I'm, where I'm going with the brush and where I'm putting my hand and so forth. So actually, um, my hand is suspended and I can lightly touch the paper with my, uh, my little finger or my uh, one part of my hand that I can study my, study my position so I get the steady stroke of the, of the object I'm painting. You notice I'm resting my finger, my left little finger on the paper gently and then positioning the paintbrush so I can paint the stroke uh, for the particular object. Here I'm using a round brush with uh, that large, with that dark brown paint mixture of uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to give me a shadow pattern. The dark side of these uh, fence rails. And here again, I'm, I'm working on this vertical surface, so I'm coming from another angle to get that particular uh, position in order to paint that stroke across that area. Now the part, um, the part I'm rest not resting on, but the part I'm close, close touching uh, is dry, so I'm able to put a small pressure with my hand on the painting as I paint that stroke across there. And positioning myself so I can get the stroke here. These small details of the of the uh, rail fence is very interesting. I'm trying to capture uh, the shape, uh, trying to capture the shadow. These rails are irregular. They're not straight. They're uh, they're kind of uh, very rough wood. But they're also I just I just love painting them. They're interesting. Uh, and they have little holes here in the in the posts uh, that they're attached to. These these are made with no nails at all. They're, these these rails go through this holes, and that's how it's attached. The rail the rails are attached to the poles through uh, through these holes, and that's the that's the structure that they're made of. And here I'm uh, painting the the shadow side of this particular post here. And be careful where I where I put my hand. Be careful of the stroke I'm doing. Uh, got to be got to go slow here uh, because I'm I'm in a tight area. But this is one of the things you learn in plain air is to uh, how to position the brush, how to position the area that you're painting in, and to get the right angle of the brush stroke. Here I'm coming from another angle, getting this uh, top top railing, this top rail with uh, the shadow pattern below. Now round brush is loaded with paint, so I can go away and do it in one one paint load of paint, and I paint that little that little hole that it goes through, the little hole in the in the post where the railing goes through, and that's where the shadow is. So I'm taking my time on this because this is a very interesting uh, object to paint. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of detail, but it shows you detail that can be done during the plain air so that you capture uh, exactly what you see. It's uh, more interesting than looking at a photograph.
information from the photograph is okay, but by looking at the object firsthand, uh, it's much more interesting, and you capture a lot more detail about that particular subject. And this is also very meditative. I mentioned that before in, in uh, the plain air or the still life lesson I gave last week was that uh, the, the part of still life is uh, the meditative. It's also, as you're painting in a plain air, in this case here, it, it, it's a very meditative uh, status. You're, 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 you're focusing on what you're doing, you're taking the time, and you're concentrating on the area that you're painting. And it becomes very meditative. It's a very uh, comforting and very uh, relaxing situation to be in, to be painting outdoors. Now take the time to capture what you see. Okay, now with a flat brush, uh, with a mixture of uh, burnt sienna and so forth, I'm going to do a rough dry stroke. That's going to capture some of that texture that's here in the foreground. Uh, there's some leaves and, and broken twigs and so forth, and the brown area that I want to capture the essence here. So the, brown, the uh, dry brush stroke with the uh, flat brush will indicate that. Uh, it'll give me a, dark, a darker value. It'll also give me a textured look. A rough surface look of exactly what I see. So uh, the flat brush using a dry stroke technique is the best way to capture that. And also while you're a plein air you're practicing uh, how to capture, how to paint things and so you want to try different things, different strokes, different techniques. So this is an overview of the finished painting, the finished painting on plein air. There's the painting and I'm going to take you up and show you the the scene I was looking at. Look at that light and look at those background trees, the backlit trees, the shadow patterns, the light coming across that middle ground tree and then hitting the surface very bright. And I tried to capture that uh, on this plain air painting. And uh, I could go back and do it in the studio and, and probably do another one. So this was a very successful trip here to uh, Locks Point Park. And here's a list of materials I used in doing that. The paints, the piper, and the brushes, and especially the palette and the bottle. Okay, uh, this is the actual painting now. Uh, I haven't done any touch up here in the studio. This is the painting I completed uh, on plein air and uh, put it behind a map board. Uh, I think the key points here, I learned some things on the on the plain air. I always do the, the brush strokes I practice down here on the fence line and also behind the, the rough, to rough up the ground. And uh, also, uh, also how to hold the brush in certain angles when you're doing uh, certain parts of the painting. I think that was another lesson I learned a little bit more. And uh, of course, every painting you do is always a different situation. And uh, even a little blue uh, area back here uh, showing a little bit of water in the, in the, in the background. So this, this Locks Point Park uh, is a very interesting place. And I think you saw in the video how bright it was out there. And uh, the photograph I had taken was on a different time and it wasn't as bright. But when I took this, when I was doing the painting, the, the light was really coming through and really getting this area really light. Now I've done another uh, little quick study that I'm going to show down the road uh, where I did a more dramatic painting. Uh, very slim, not similar to this, but in the, almost in the same location. And I think I'll share that with you down the road a little bit. But this was a good one to start with at the Locks Point Park. Uh, let me go over to my uh, main camera. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. That was a, a really great uh, time I had out there. The weather was beautiful. The lighting was perfect. And uh, I just wanted to paint that. And I, and, I'm, and I was very fortunate that I videotaped everything so I could put that together as a package to show you how I painted it. And, and I, hope, I hope you all liked that and got something out of it. So give me some comments and give me some thumbs up and uh, some subscriptions on my YouTube page.
and uh, I'll be back again next Thursday. What I'm going to do next Thursday is I'm going to introduce some techniques on using a spray bottle. I'm going to do a small painting, but I'll go over techniques. So stay tuned for next week to learn more about dot spray and fine mist spray bottles. Palette in the bottle. So I'll see you next Thursday.